Now, to perform Spearman Rho in MS Excel, so the Spearman Rho correlation is the non-parametric counterpart of Pearson R. So in our example, um, let us assume that 10 students had a 40 item exam, and here we have the number of hours the students studied for the exam, and here is the exam scores. Now, we want to know if there is a correlation between the student study hours and the exam scores. If yes, is the correlation coefficient significant? Okay, so first we'll transform these ratings into rank. So to transform these ratings into rank, we'll use um, equals rank average, and then the number is this, 5, comma, and then reference is um, 5 up to 7, comma, and then we'll use 0 for descending, then close parenthesis. So to make copying easier for um, later purposes, we'll um, put dollar signs here. And then enter. Okay, so now we have six. So let's copy it. There we go. And then we'll do the same thing for the um, second, for the exam scores. Okay, so equals rank average, then the number 49 comma, and then reference 49 up to 48, comma, and then 0 for descending, so that um, rank 1 would be the highest number. So, again, we'll put um, dollar signs. Then enter. Copy. There we go. So, now that we have the values, we can now get the correlation coefficient. So, to get the correlation coefficient, we'll type equals and then corral for correlation. And there we have the open parenthesis and then we'll use the first group of data. So first array of data. So we have six up to four, comma, and then second array of data, one up to two. And then close parenthesis. So now our coefficient is 0 0.5636364. Okay, so from the result, we can say that we can say that there is moderate positive correlation based from the um, data or table we have shown earlier in our video. Okay, so to check the correlation, we'll use the t-statistics formula. So to do that, we'll need the pairwise, which is n, which is the number of cases. So we'll just type here. This is the, this is the n, the pair, pairwise cases. So we'll just type 10. Using this formula, we'll have the equal sign, open parenthesis, and then let's use the absolute value function. Just to be sure, because um, there's a possibility that the um, coefficient could be negative. So now we add the coefficient times to the square root of 10 here, minus 2. Okay, so um, this is our um, numerator, our numerator over here. This is our numerator. Now we divide it to this. So that's divide by open parenthesis, square root. And then this is, and then one minus the coefficient squared. Okay, so now our t statistics is one point nine two nine nine seven five seven. Okay, to decide whether the coefficient is significant, over here it is asked if the coefficient is significant. To decide whether the coefficient is significant, we'll need d p value this one so we'll first need the degrees of freedom so degrees of freedom is um pairwise case which is n minus 2 so since our pairwise, pairwise case is 10 so we we'll just 10 minus 2 is equals to 8 so for p value we'll have equals and then t dist t dist and then open parenthesis and then the t-statistics, comma, the degrees of freedom, over there. And then, comma, and then, 2 for, 2 for, um, 2-tailed test. Okay, so we'll put 2. Over here you can see there is 2-tailed distribution, so we'll put 2 and then, close, enter.
Okay, so now our p value is 0 0.089724028. Okay, for our level of significance, since it's not stated in here, we'll just assume assume that it is 0 0.05. Okay. Okay, since our p value is greater than our level of significance, it means that do not reject the null hypothesis. So this means that our coefficient is not significant. So to get the critical value, we'll have equals and then t that i n v to t. Okay, so t that i n v dot to t. So then parenthesis and then our level of significance, comma the degrees of freedom, and then close and enter. So now this is our critical value. So we'll compare this with the t statistics. So since our t statistics is lower, this means that our coefficient is not significant.